All right, so this is the Hi-Fi Man HE1000 unveiled, and I did some impressions of this on the live stream recently, but I wanted to do a dedicated video uh, just for folks who may have missed that. So this is gonna be a quick kind of rundown on the HE1000 unveiled from Hi-Fi Man. And the question is, of course, is the HE1000 unveiled good? The answer is yes. Is it better than the other HE1000s? So the HE1000 V2, et cetera, et cetera. And the answer is, Yes, in a number of areas, and I'll go over that in a moment, but just in general, this is, in my opinion, one of the better oval shape or ovoid shaped uh, Hi-Fi Man headphones that they do. But of course, the big question with these unveiled versions of the Hi-Fi Man headphones is whether or not removing the grill, exposing the driver, exposing the membrane to the world is a good idea, and the answer is still, of course not. The thing is, with the unveiled version of the HE-1000, this is not as concerning to me as was the case with the Susvara, the bigger brother, uh, unveiling of that one. Because in this instance, there's not as much of surface area for the membrane that's actually exposed. Uh, because the distance between the magnets seems to be smaller, so or the gaps are smaller. So it's less likely for things to accidentally get yeeted through the... Uh, through the diaphragm, through the membrane. There is still a worry here, it's just not as much of a worry because there's not as much exposed surface area. Uh, and so for me, this product is not actually disqualified as a result. Um, and so I'm very thankful for that. But I'm just gonna go over my thoughts on this headphone real quick here in this video uh, and kind of get into some of the data to show you guys how it performs, uh, to give you guys a sense. As usual, this is all made possible by headphones.com. Uh, and if you wanna support what we do, consider headphones.com for your next audio purchase. Now, of course, this is a brand new HE1000 series product from Hi-Fi Man. So it is on the expensive side. It is on the high end side of things. Um, so, you know, here's the price. But the thing is, as of filming this right now, there are a number of the other HE1000 series that are discounted, so that are on sale. And so right now is actually not a bad time to be looking at those ones if you think this is, you know, outlandishly expensive. And on top of it, the Aria platform, so those oval shaped ones that are kind of derivative of the AG1000 series, they are heavily discounted uh, to the point where they are gonna be significantly better value than one of these. Now, I'm gonna give you guys my subjective thoughts on how this sounds first, and then we'll go into some of the data here. But to me, this one is reminiscent of some of the other Hi-Fi Man HE1000 series headphones, and it does similar things very well. So it's a very spacious sound. It's very detailed, very refined. The difference with the unveiled, to me at least, is that vocal timbre is actually significantly improved. I find the textural qualities of certain instrument tones also come forward a little bit. Um, and I'm actually able to correlate this with the data, which I'll get into here momentarily, which is one of the key changes. Um, I think people are often wondering, like, does the unveiling of it, you know, ha have a significant impact overall on the spaciousness effect? And my answer is actually no, not really. I mean, it does sound very spacious and open and airy, but I think that's just a consequence of its frequency response. And to me, this is, again, it's all about openness, airiness, but there is a an improvement to timbre. That's the big thing, at least to me, when it comes to this headphone compared to some of the other HE 1000 series and also the Aria series. This doesn't come across quite as strident <laughs> or maybe like, you know, occasionally harsh because it doesn't have some of those peaks in the treble. Um, still though, there is an element of the lower treble that does come across a bit, I'm gonna borrow a word from, from listener here, clenched. Uh, and I've described it this way in our live stream recently as well. Uh, it, it has a kind of a, there's an, there's an excess uh, of around four kilohertz to my ear at least. And that does tend to kind of like focus things in the treble towards that region. It almost like kind of constrains or, or compresses the treble just a little bit. Uh, just a little bit. This is a nitpick here. And that's also the case for some of the other HE1000 series, I find at least as well. So that's my main criticism for this headphone is that that one feature in the treble does kind of stand out. But for the rest of it, this is very well balanced, very natural and surprisingly smooth sounding. And that's a nice in my view at least, improvement over some of the other ones that take this same form factor. So now let's pull up the data and I will go through this here for you guys. We've measured this both on the Gross 43AG and the BNK 5228. These are averages that you're seeing here. Um, so it's an average of many different seatings, but like this is one of the most consistent headphones 
period <laughs> ever <laughs> that I've come across. And that's a good thing because if you think about other headphones where, you know, the coupling might be different or the pad deformation might be different, your, your response is going to be quite different. Uh, and you can see that in positional variation. With these ones, it doesn't happen like at all. Like the tiny little bit, but that's about it. So very good there. You can see here that the bass is fully extended, almost perfectly flat here, all the way down to 20 hertz. So you get all of the bass information and it does come through really nicely on this headphone. It's, it is tight, it is nimble, I might say. It's just not bass boosted and you can see that here as well. For a lot of people, they like a bit more bass and so if you're that kind of person and this is a headphone you're interested in, I do recommend adding a bass shelf. That is what I do, I, I, I EQ it and I add a bass shelf. But overall, even without EQ, this is a very well performing open back headphone across the board. And it is not as bright as the other ones, like I mentioned, the, the previous sort of generation of HE1000 series. In fact, this is maybe almost closer to the original HE1000 uh, for that level of, of ear gain, for that level, level of treble. Um, but the key thing here that I want to focus on is that this typical dip that you see in the mids at around 2 kilohertz, it's less on the unveiled than it is on the other ones. And that's the same, the same thing is true for the Svara unveiled as well. You still see a dip there. It's just not as substantial as what you get with the other ones. And then in the treble, it is still a little bit on the bright side, just again, <laughs> pulled back from the edge of, of, of craziness. And in my view, this is a very good thing. And the areas that you do get a bunch of excess treble, it's in that sort of upper treble air region, which for this kind of response and the balance with the rest of the treble and the mids is totally fine and innocuous in my opinion. Unfortunately, I don't have the HE1000 SE here, but compared to the V2, you can see here the mid range is um, better. It's not quite as dipped in that section there at around two kilohertz. The treble is also not quite as forward in the mid treble and I think it's a good thing across the board. Now just to give you guys a rundown on how this performs relative to some of the other models in this sort of oval shaped Hi-Fi Man headphone range, I actually think the closest sound signature might be something like the Aria Stealth, uh, which has a similar kind of mid-range presentation where the dip isn't as extreme as it is on some of the other ones. It's still a little bit better there for much of it on the unveiled here. Uh, and the treble response is not quite as peaky on the unveiled as it is on the Aria Stealth. There, it could occasionally be a little bit on the strident side depending on what you're listening to with that headphone. And, and compared to the Aria Organic, the Organic is also similar, but it is a little bit more like V-shaped or U-shaped with that interesting kind of bass contour feature there. Uh, which may actually be a driver mode in and of itself and uh, extra treble and you can see that here. Now compared to the original Susvara, you can see that the Susvara is once again a little bit more dipped in that same mid-range section around two kilohertz as it goes into the ear gain. The Susvara is still not quite as bright in a number of different places as the HE1000 unveiled. And if I compare it to the Susvara Unveiled, that's actually the one that has that mid-range dip filled in the most for much of it. It's slightly shifted, but also the treble features are pretty similar between the two. The Unveiled just seems to have more air up top, and that was one area where the Susvara Unveiled was a bit more relaxed. Uh, making some of those lower treble features like at around six kilohertz or maybe even around four kilohertz stand out a little bit more So again with all of these I don't think it's a straightforward case of one of them being just categorically better than all of them My preference is for the original Susvara um, Over all of them, but I know that there are people who are going to prefer the Susvara unveiled But when it comes to the HE1000 platform I do think that this unveiled one is better than the ones that I have tested Again, there is one more for me still to test, and I hope to be able to do that soon. That's the HE1000 SE. I know you guys are wanting that one, but you'll just have to wait a little bit longer. Now, one other thing with the data here, and you can't really see this that well because this is an average of many different seatings, but one of the things that the oval-shaped Hi-Fi Man headphones often have is they have a more modal response, which is characterized by some of the jet more jagged features that you see in the mid-range. Um, it actually is a, it's something that occurs throughout the response as well, but you see, you see it more dramatically in the mid-range. Um, this headphone seems to do a better job there, so it's not as modal as many of the other ones. People are asking me, like, is that because they took the grill off? No. Well, it might be, but that's 
also something that happens when you do other things, right? So that has to do with the, the stiffness of the diaphragm, the tensioning of the diaphragm, other factors to do with the driver that exists here. And this is a different driver. Again, the value proposition for the ones that are on sale is still better, significantly better in my opinion, but that is one area. If that's a thing you care about, that's one area where they have made an improvement with this headphone. Lastly, for harmonic distortion, this is not as good as what you find with the best planar magnetic headphones. I do think that this is actually better than what you get with some of the other oval shaped high fm end headphones. Once you get to like the crazy volume levels, like 110 dB, you do start to see like uh, third order and fourth order harmonic products uh, creeping in at like, you know, 0.5%. I don't think this stuff is gonna be audible at all. And I don't think this puts any impediment on EQ. I just wanted to note it because this is something where like planar magnetics it's a key advantage that planar magnetics have over uh, moving coil headphones. And this is no exception. It is still better than most of them, but it's not the best for harmonic distortion for planar magnetic headphones. Like the Odyssey ones still do a better job than these, for example. As far as drivability, here are the power requirements. You can also use the power calculator yourself to determine whether or not you need an amplifier or some sort of power for it. I ran this out of the Vioelectric HPA V550, but it's not one that is particularly difficult to drive. Now, for the mechanical and industrial design, uh, the looks here are, I mean, this is like, if you think sound is subjective, this is really subjective. I like the way that this looks. I know a lot of people don't. To me, this looks a lot better than the wood veneer that was on the previous versions. Again, I'm not a fan of the unveiling. That to me is still a bit of a meme, but at a, at a glance, it, it actually looks kind of striking. And then for the rest of the mechanical design, it's the same as what you get with basically all of them. It's the same headband, full cup swivel, which is really nice. Tons of clicks, tons of space. Um, there was one other thing that I did test actually, which is, um, so because the ear opening is so huge, for some people it's gonna actually protrude down past their jaw and create a gap. So the seal will get broken, but these are very large undamped drivers, meaning that when you break the seal, break the coupling, uh, say even if you have like glasses, for example, the base goes up, not down. And the resonance frequency of the driver here is actually quite low. Like it's at like 40 Hertz or something like that. So there's actually like a natural base boost for people for whom the seal gets broken. You lucky few. <laughs> for me, it actually couples just fine. Um, but uh, that's not something you need to worry about with these headphones. Like losing the base is not something you need to worry about with these headphones because of that. But that's basically all that I have to say about this headphone. Again, I'm not personally that into this whole unveiled concept. It's not the direction that I would have gone, but it has to be said that this headphone acoustically performs well and better than the previous version in a number of key areas. I think for people who wanted more treble energy or they like that brighter kind of sound, the other ones might actually be more to your taste, like the Aria series, like the Aria Organic and the Aria Stealth, and then also the HE1000 V2. This, again, it's a little bit more uh, versatile because it's not quite as intense in the treble as some of those. Um, and I think that's a good change. It's still a little bit on the leaner side of things compared to conventional headphones. Um, so if you're expecting a you know, a ton of bass or like an ultra warm kind of response. Nope, that's not what these are about at all. This is still more along the lines of that kind of like linear, you know, neutral, uh, if neutral bright-ish, slightly uh, leaning sound. And if you do want to give it a bass boost, you would do that with EQ. If you want a bass boost with these, you, you would EQ that. And I do recommend doing that. You know, with the Susvara original versus the Susvara unveiled, there are things that they did in the treble that I actually prefer on the original. With this one, I think it's just straightforwardly better than the previous generation. Uh, the question mark there in my mind is still the HE1000 SE, whatever the current version of that is, because there's been several versions and I haven't tested the most recent one, so I still need to do that. Um, but as far as the ones that I've tested and also compared to the Aria platform and all of the like oval shaped ones, this one is my favorite for the sound quality. So if you're the kind of person who is into that kind of sound signature that I just described, this gets a really strong recommendation from me. Just keep in mind that this sort of unveiling thing uh, does come with these covers and you should use them. Like don't use them, don't play the headphone when you're using them because that's ridiculous. But you can see here, these are the, the covers. They just sort of magnetize onto it like that. And when you're not using these headphones, you should do that just so that you avoid any, uh, any issues. And 
Also keep in mind that for this type of sound signature, there is better value to be had because Hi-Fi Man's own headphones are on deep sales right now. Oh, and the cables, you get two cables here. They're better. So even though I might recommend one of the Listen More cables, also available at headphones.com, uh, I would be totally comfortable using the existing default cables that come with these headphones. They're okay. Anyways, that is all that I have to say about the Hi-Fi Man HE1000 Unveiled. As usual, guys, if you're interested in the data, that's all posted below in the description. And of course, if you want to chat with me or other like-minded Wiggly Air people, check out our forum, check out our Discord, and all of that good stuff. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.